I always look bigger than you. Why do I look bigger than you? I don't know. I mean, is, is, is it your ego? Yeah, it might be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay, then, so... So, what's the difference between the BKFA, Laugar, Guardian Council, and this book? The book's got a spine. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm no, kidding. Hang on. fight before yeah you good yeah i'm good good defense yeah <laughs> must train different in america your defense stinks you are the new student come closer You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. I didn't think you had it in you. I'm your huckleberry. And Steve Newby. What I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Go on. That's all right. I'm pulling me closer. Oh, that's all right. (laughs) Okay, welcome everybody to the Kung Fu Podcast with me, James Still, and the uh, the venerable old man himself, freezing his knackers <laughs> off, Steve Newby. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. I'm fine, yeah. Well, happy Minus... New Year. Happy New Year to you. Yes, it is. Uh, although we've spoken, um, yeah, Happy New Year to our uh, listener. Uh, yeah, our listener. I hope you've had, <laughs> you had a good one. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh... yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Have you got it's... any news? Have you got any news? Um, no, 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 no. I don't think I've got any news about martial arts, but uh, okay, yeah, the weather's. Oh, uh, uh, I got rattled. some news. I got some news. Well, uh, yes, you have. Yes. No, yes. no, no, no. Yes. Yeah, so oh, no, basically, okay. I was going to tell everybody about uh, yeah. the ultimate chicken chow mein recipe, which I found <laughs> on Zhang's. Honestly, there's a YouTube channel called Zhang's Chinese Workshop. If you ever wanted uh, Chinese takeaway food recipes as you would get them, if not better, from the takeaway. Do you go on it. Zhang's Chinese. I've seen, a, I've seen a few of those. And it's um, a mum and a son who live yeah. in Somerset Way, I think, in the UK. And they just yeah. run this YouTube channel, and they teach you how to do Chinese takeaway. Everything. Oh, and it's like I've made chow mains, which I'll never pay for a chow mein again. Again. At a, at a, at a takeaway. Cause, but, you know, all you need is a bit of MSG. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, no, but that's it's so what good. that's what does it. Yeah, <laughs> that's so good. It's really good. And um, and uh, what was the other thing? Oh, oh yeah, uh, my wife is expecting a baby. But hey, yeah. we'll gloss over that. <laughs> that's not important. <laughs> it's my baby, by the way. Just yeah, so we know. No, just well, just, just, you know. I, th- I hope we'll I hope. find out. We'll find out. So that's that's exciting. <laughs> I'm going to be a daddy. Yeah. Okay. So. What I figured we'd do, uh, what is the sort of over every podcast I think has got to have an arc. What's our arc going to be today? What are we aiming for? (laughs) I don't know. No, I don't know. Okay, so we wanted to talk about essentially sort of the a celebrity ish culture within martial arts and how it's sort of degrading it, yeah, how it's sort of detrimental. But we'll get on to that. Yeah, um, I think that'll be a good, good discussion because we've got a lot of gripe. Um, I'd like to also talk about sort of the death of Lao Gar as a style, mm. uh, you know, because it is, it is, it's on life support. Let's be fair. Um, now, in comparison to where it used to be, oh, it's, yeah. it's definitely, uh, <laughs> struggling, you know, reduced in, yeah, okay. Uh, but before we do that, I think, um, should we just check out, see if we've got any comments? On our on our um, YouTube channel, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, you know, when are you going to do another one?" That's what, nice. You, oh yeah, I know. Yeah. We've been saying we'll do it for a while, but it's just um, yeah. Oh bloody hell! Let me. Just... Oh right, okay. So Tom Newton says uh, this is on, uh, on the video um, on our last video. A chav walks into a shop. <sighs> um. 
I will never hear of tiring you guys clown on Jake Mace. <laughs> hey, his kung fu might, might not be as good as it looks. Tai Chi, Zing Yi, Bagua, Shaolin, Kung Fu, Mantis, traditional weapons. Truly an impressive list of things he doesn't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's true, Tom. He does. Yeah. To be honest, what's happened to Jake Mace? He's, he, is he kind of... He's. I, I think, think he got only... upset. I think he got upset. I, th I think he got upset that people were dissing him. Oh, right. Okay. Maybe he's gone to a Shaolin temple to start training somewhere. Maybe, maybe. you know. Maybe. maybe. I don't know why he'd go all that way, like, considering it's a communist country and, you know. I don't know. It died out a long time ago, but, you know. Yeah. No, the no, government no. knows. The Chinese government knows how to, you know, make a buck. They sure, they sure as hell do. That's, and it's mostly yeah. the, the Guai Lows who are, who are helping them. <laughs> well, I, when I went, there was like 73 different clubs around the Shaolin Mm. area yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's that. just yeah yeah go to, to episode one or two or th I was that remember. it was it it was early on it was early on in the thing well, now, well, joe, people are not going to go back back do you remember joe back. do you remember are joe? They in black and white no sure do you remember joe <laughs> joe no. do you remember joe who sent uh, we were talking to oh yeah joe yeah yeah joe. yeah yeah so she sent a message she sent a a comment on that video yeah. She said, yeah. I mostly enjoyed the bit where somebody was rendered briefly unconscious from that wrist strike. What? What wrist strike? I'm trying to think what she talked about there. We we had a disagreement with Joe about interpretation of the you second did. set. You <laughs> did? Oh, no, right, no, okay. No, no, no. We had a disagreement with Joe. Okay. I had a disagreement with Joe because yeah. it was kind of implied that we are um, – sort of uh, bullying people. That was implied. So that's why I disagreed with uh, Joe. Okay, yeah, but yeah, then we enough. disagreed with Joe on a technical level about the use of the wrist strike in the second set and how um, it would best be served instead of going out as a strike where you run the risk of, sort of damaging Breaking your wrist. Yourself. Yeah. It's uh, not it meant for that. Be, it would be more of a sideways thing. It's now, a bounce. It's called it's tarn a... bouncing. Bounce, right. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay, so it's tarn. But now, no, I, I'm just trying to decipher this. Is hmm. it... I can't remember. what. And anyway, we didn't have a disagreement with her. She's got a disagreement with us. There you go. There you go. And uh, that's, I respect that. I respect that. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. It's a um, good argument. Yeah, um, it mostly enjoyed the bit where somebody was br rendered briefly unconscious from that. It might have been. Do you think it was what Gary? What are you talking about? Was it uh, Steve? No, it's, 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 surely it's pertaining to that, that, that episode we did, the last one. What else did we talk about on there? I don't know. I'm trying to think. It's, 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 uh, I can't remember. You'll have to look it up. I'll, yeah, I'll have, to, you, I'll have to elaborate on that, Joe, if you can, because I don't know exactly mm. what you mean. But I was okay, so that's all right couple on there um uh, it's nice that she's still in touch oh that's, that's nice good. That's i hope good. she's doing well yeah I'd, absolutely uh so oh yeah second set second set um okay on the video uh El ellen murphy says my savior with hearts on it well that's <laughs> nice yeah very nice so, so, so thank you ellen yeah. right thank you ellen <laughs> Uh, it's nice when you get the, the impression that people appreciate it. They're always welcome to send questions as well if they've oh. always got problems. Always. I love always. love receiving questions and, you know, argument too. Yeah. Uh, Jake Mace, again, great reaction video, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's Jong So. As far as I know, back from the day, and I still have the old book with Jeremy Yao in it, says Ken McIntosh. Yeah. Again, the second set video we did. Yes, yeah. I've got I've got a copy of that old book actually with pictures I, of yeah, Master I, Yao in it. I, I haven't got the original. I've got the original. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. I got two of them. There were two of them. Yeah. One was in black and white. The other one in color. Yeah. Well, at least the page, the the the, the front page was in black and white in the first one, and then it was in color. But then after that, the, the inside they're all black and white. Yeah, they? they were quite they were quite well done. To be fair, I, I like them. Yeah, but well, well, what's a photograph? Uh, there's a lot of argument from the photographs. Yeah. Uh, the fifth set was a really good one when they saw a hand like that. And so yeah, it is like that. Suddenly it became like that. And, it, it? and it's like that because he, he took it just as he was just about to, to transition. To chain. Yeah. yeah, to transmission. Yeah, yeah. To, tran tra trans tra whatever you call it. 
Transition. <laughs> transition. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> transmission. So the picture was taken just as about to transition to yeah. the next move. Yeah. So then everyone goes, oh, it's like this yeah. <laughs> in yeah. the picture. Well, yeah, it is in the picture. That's why okay. you go to classes. Right. A, a few a few of these are centered around the second set, these comments. Now, the yeah. booby prize so far, thus far, goes to William Els. Okay, William. We Hi, appreciate William. the comment, but you just, this looks a lot like Wing Chun's first form. Does this show common ancestry? It's a legitimate question, but it's still a booby prize because you mentioned Wing Chun. Now, um, <laughs> but it does. We, we, we but, but it does. To be fair to him, we talked about this. Or on what we, we talk about the uh, style similarities. Was. Yeah, it was when ah oh. episode thirty five. That's what you want to watch. Episode 35, and we talk all about that. Um, so, William, episode 35 of the Kung Fu Podcast, and we just talk about, you know, your comment, essentially, and, and a lot of others like that. Uh, so thank you again for the comment. That's lovely. Um, moving on. It, uh, oh, it's nothing to do with us. But, you, you know, Bob Sykes is. Yeah. You know Bob Sykes. Is, he's got a YouTube channel, and, and he put he posts a load of old Taekwondo. videos. Taekwondo. Uh, no, Bob Sykes wasn't Taekwondo. He was I'm thinking of someone else. Yeah, I'm thinking, thinking of Bob, someone else. Bob Sykes, he was, you know, sort of prevalent in the UK martial arts scene, sort of 70s, 80s. Yeah, I, I was thinking of someone else. I, was yeah. thinking, I mean, maybe I was thinking of someone else because yeah, there was he... a Taekwondo. Um, and then, but I can't remember. No, well, anyway, so I mess, I just sent, a, I, I watched a video of him sparring Bill Wallace when Wallace came over to the UK to do a course. Okay. And Bob Sykes, he was, a, he was quite a good fighter, to be fair, Bob Sykes. I really like him. Yeah. You know, to, but you know, um, and um, he did a beautiful sweep on Wallace, like beautiful, like set what like w Wallace took it so well because he's just a consummate professional. But Bob yeah. like set him up, did like um, what, what would you call it? a dragon sweep sort of thing? As as Wallace lifted up his left leg to kick him, faked yeah. him, bam, and then he on his ass. It was great. It's wonderful. Yeah, and, it was probably uh, planned that all night. Oh, yeah. but, you know, oh, for I, weeks. I, I, yeah. Oh, he yeah, knew was, he was going to lift his leg up because that's what he's, he's known for. It was, yeah, exa right. And and you know it's going to be left leg. But anyway, I sent, I, I sent a, a message saying I, I, I really like that great video, Bob. Thanks a lot. And he said, well, I'll do my best, he says. So that was, that was <laughs> that's ex external from our channel. So I like that. Yeah, tr Bob Sykes' YouTube channel. Uh, a few old school sort of fights and stuff from the uk uh, martial arts scene back in the day but uh yeah so anyway oh well uh, i won't go on in for the me my emails won't lo load fast enough so yeah. anyway right okay so yeah th thanks guys yeah so uh, we do get a lot of a lot of requests i guess and uh, a lot of comments pertaining to the set videos and that I think they're really important, and we really should pull the plug out of our backside and do. Yeah, well, you know, if you want to go out there twenty-seven degrees minus, then well, uh, you know. Yeah, but hang on, you've been using that same excuse now for about a year. Yeah, well, downstairs was just full of junk because we've just moved in, and the other place is not insulated. I am building a gym, yeah, but it's just not insulated yet. When okay. it's insulated, it'll be a gym. It's got we we just bought a set of weights as well, yeah, yeah. right from from the neighbour. We just okay. bought a load of you know one of those weight benches with the the, the bars and because the, because that's going to help you with martial arts, isn't it? No, no help. No, that's for Aaron. But okay. the thing, it's a place to put them, James. It's a place <laughs> right. to put them. Oh, okay, it's, all right. We got a, tra a a cross trainer, a running machine, a yeah. set of weights, and yeah. Uh, sit up bench whatever you know none, the, none of it's going to help me i'm too you, far gone <laughs> do, do you know the best thing that i ever had i was telling uh i was telling ben the other day um the best thing that, to help me develop like punching power or kicking power right mm. the best thing i ever i ever did i had an old um carcass of a punch bag that i nicked yeah. from mcdonald's in hereford don't ask me what a, a punch bag carcass was doing in mcdonald's but I nicked it, and uh, I, I took it home, and I thought, what have I got to fill up this punch bag with? So I found some crap old clothes, and I, I, I thought, ah, that's that's too soft. So I started filling it with soil, right? <laughs> and I hung it on a tree. <laughs> I did. But I was filling it up as it hung on the tree. And as, I, as it got quite full, gonna all the soil solid. is going to get solid. <laughs> so I went, and I went, ah, like that. And, oh, like that, you know, <laughs> really hurt my hand. 
but, I'm not surprised, yeah. <laughs> but but I, I would, uh, you know, you could. I would make the argument that if you are constantly punching, and it was a give, a slight give, like because the bag isn't fixed. It's not well, it's like, like a t- one of those uh, ta- Tamiwara, taki- Takiwara board. Makawara board, yeah, yeah, the board, yeah, whatever. But with a bit more resistance, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 at least the punch bag could move. But my point was, if you get used to punching a real solid punch bag, like a real, real solid one, mm. and I, not constant, not every day, you know, sort of training, but well, like, if you get, all right, that's an argument to be made, but. My point is, if you get used to punching a really hard punch bag and you can keep some form, eventually your body aligns itself and you get used to um, putting down some serious power. Yeah, much maybe. More so, I, I, much, I more see. So, much more so than if you punched a soft punch bag. Because it's well, like... Uh, the, my argument is, uh, you know, for that, obviously, is that even, even boxers... They're not going to punch a bag like that. And if they do, they're going to have bloody thick gloves on. But they're yeah. going to strap their fingers anyway. If you hit anything wrist. hard, yeah. it's not going to be yeah. good for your hands making yeah. a fist. So well, you're going to hinder your hands in a, in a fight if you are not you know, prepared well, for it. Okay, so, so I, you, it doesn't just have to be fists, though. You could, you could go and strike it with your palm. But my point is well, it was yeah, like a yeah. very hard... But it gives as well. It's a very yeah. hard object, yeah. but it does give as well. So if well, you take could... a look at the. Sorry, I was going to say, take a look at the people who are kicking, you know, trees. You know, I'm they right. do it. They do it. Yeah, but they're soft trees. And that's the well, yeah, they're make. they're kind of you know kind of oh, yeah. what are they called? Like little palm tree kind of things, yeah. little little trunks of little little bushes or whatever they are. But mm. they look good when they hit them, and they're pretty solid. And I wouldn't like to hit one with my shin, but a lot of them, you know, especially the ones who do the tie yeah, box, they yeah, like yeah. to kick those things. Oh, absolutely. So, well, they need to, don't they? Because that's yeah. that's part of their sort of rule set. And, you know, and it's a absolute viable yeah. weapon if you're not training that. If you're not do it, getting the conditioning, you're going to clash your shins with someone else. Yeah, you're going exactly. to feel that pain. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I, like, I'm not in any way conditioned to like do a Thai boxing bout with my leg. Oh no, no, oh, you'll get oh. enough lumps on your shin. Someone exactly. could climb up them and smack you in the mouth. Couldn't they? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, yeah. so yeah, conditioning is important, but I was like, um, Oh, that's a good way. Cause you know, just to hitting it, punching it, pushing it. It's a massive sort of resistance. And then, you know, you come to slap something or punch, uh, you know, you can really put down the power because you're so yeah. used to this absolute, this 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 massive resistance. Yeah, there was a guy in one of the clubs that I, you know, when I was about a yellow sash, I think, and he, right. he invited me to come to a full time gym they had, right. uh, which was run by some old Irish guy. Uh, he, he had nothing to do with martial arts, but he just he held he, he had the building, you know. Yeah. So it had it had a lot of things in it. it had jujitsu, uh, it had judo in it, and mm. this guy was teaching kung fu, but you know he had a certificate on the wall just saying kung fu from oh, okay, yeah. you know the dustbin of martial arts yeah and they're really yeah. nice guy but you know they they had all this and anyway they they had a room with lots of different exercise so you'd, in, you'd you'd be invited to this uh it was you know, like training the 36 chambers it had it had a steel it had a steel mask with yeah. two eye sockets and you had to no. you had to use each um each point right. for um, one minute and you would just simply poke your eyes through the holes of this steel mask and then there was blood all down the one brick wall because people would just punch the wall uh. for uh you know for a minute and they had one of the and a, a wood there was a wooden pole on the so you just kick over the pole for a minute right. Right. you know front kicks whatever yeah. and then there was a one of these bags uh, a punch bag yeah canvas full of sand Right, and that, and now I know why. You know, when you said you you did that, I thought straight away. I thought, ouch, because yeah. I just remember. Oh it no, was... no, no! But it was ouch because I wasn't conditioned to hit it. My yeah, point yeah, is, yeah. if you hit it every day, yeah, you get, eventually, you build up some I guess. sort of conditioning, and and you yeah. kind of you could you, you could put down a lot of. Power. Maybe we're talking like snowflakes. Maybe people in the you know. No, I'm not in talking. The, in I, the... I, I no, in the 18th, I'm just saying, oh, in, right, like yeah. in back in Shaolin, they probably would have looked at you and go, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. right, exactly. Fill yeah. it with dirt. What's wrong with that? Duh. What? Duh. Yeah. Boxing gloves? <laughs> Duh. What you, what's that? What's a boxing glove? You know. Yeah. 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 No, I get it. I just, I was just saying the point. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's funny. As opposed to punching a really crap soft 
punch bag. Or yeah. Particularly oh, those yeah, the ones things... that on the stand. You yeah. know, the you know, you hit it and it went like that. Yeah. Like, oh, what you Yeah, mine was really soft. But it was good though. It was yeah. good. It just and it had a lot of water in it, but now you can't even fill them with water. So you know, not well, enough you, water. You can't, or... you can't where you are, it bloody freeze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll yeah. crack. No, I, I didn't I, think the cars were gonna start this morning. Is I said to I said to because I was saying to Ben about this punch bag thing. I said I said top I said top like equipment that I've ever used training. I said tennis ball on a string. Yeah, hanging they had that bum, as bum, well. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I said a, a, a medium sort of punch bag where it's got some give and you can work it. I said a hard punch bag like full with sand or something like that was useful because I could train structure in punching and I could do stop kicks on it and stuff. And Bob, I said four things. I said I would, I, you know, and a, a Bob is great for the accuracy and stuff. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And that's all I would want. I miss I'd Bob. Probably, oh, Bob was great. I, I thought about a wooden dummy mm. and I thought, well, yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, once you've used them, I think yeah. they, they, you, uh, yeah. know, uh, you end up hanging your coat on it, don't you? But again, you are, yeah, you are, you are like, vroom, 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 and so you're banging, you know, you're building up your your, your forearms and stuff. Aren't much you? the same as the the solid bag, you know. But then I'd say, I, I know, I know, it implies equipment. You're solo training, but I just sooner do stick it yeah. onto someone. And yeah. the, and get the conditioning that way. <laughs> I think, yeah, and then at least yeah. get something from it. But that's just yeah. Me. Um, so yeah. Anyway, sorry, sidetrack then. Um, yeah. Man, no, funny fun. martial arts seventies. Anyway, martial arts dead, <laughs> old man. I told you. I told you yeah. they're dead. Well, you <laughs> did say that a while back, didn't you? And I, uh, you know, I disagree with you, and I'm trying to support it and all the traditionalism and everything. Um, but you're right. I think. Uh, well, I'm beginning to realise that at this day and age now, it does seem to be that it's it's starting to. It's it's on its demise. It's on its last legs. It's just not being recognised in the same way. You have got so many people who we talk about celebrities. We talk about traditional artists mm. in the sense that they are trying to train traditional martial arts, but without the science. A lot of them, you know, I mean, Oof. probably ninety percent of organisations here, uh, well, around the world, to be honest, mm. including in China, have not got the scientific structure that they once had. Uh, and basically, it's just out. How many students can I get? How much money can I make? And yeah. uh, you know, celebrity yeah. status has taken over. Well, uh, not you... just in obviously, not just in sports. Um, remember, in sports, yeah, they can, they 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 become celebrities. So that's why people want to do it because they see people as celebrities, and they want to they want to go and train with them. Yeah, they don't see the same celebrity status with a traditional you know master or martial arts instructor or uh, traditional instructor they don't see it the same way mm. so they're they're avid supporters of it and then they lose the will to fight literally they What's lose the, the, the uh, ability to fight well i well i think you mentioned a couple of things there you said sports you, you mentioned traditionalism you we've always spoke about you can't pigeonhole those you can't put those two categories in the same uh in the same sort of box uh, and expect you know it to you... right what i mean is sport is one thing yeah traditional fighting is another <laughs> yeah fighting well, it's self defense it's that's it's designed exactly. for self defense it's not word. designed for no. you know fighting so, uh, so, in per right, se okay. yeah, sport yeah, no. but you got but then you've got um, and I don't think a lot of traditional guys, I use the words in, you know, in quotation marks a lot, um, particularly a lot of the Kung Fu guys ever do themselves any favor on, on, on YouTube and whatnot. Right. No. Um, have you seen that guy He's a Chinese guy? Um, every one of his bloody videos, he does Wing Chun, but every one of his videos is sped up. Like mm -hmm. is, is uh, it, they call him some master or something. He must be in his, mid to late 30s he's got black floppy hair and he's always wearing a mandarin suit and every one of his videos he's speeding up his techniques his students are like posing with kick shields and that he'll <laughs> he'll pose his hand he'll pose his foot out in a side kick and then just whip it into a turning kick and the student goes wow flow flying um all in a sort of you know effort to sort of promote what he's teaching but none of it i've never um obviously i'm not convinced at all like it's complete 
crap, but it's great marketing for him because he gets people talking. Yeah. Um, but he's also developing a following, uh, uh, you know, which, oh, fantastic, you know, great. Gets people talking about Kung Fu, brilliant. But I know the argument from every other non Kung Fu stylist, and the argument yeah. would be what? Show us your fighting. Yeah. That's it. Because he doesn't. Yeah. Everything is choreographed. Yeah. You know? And it, and it's and it looks great when it's choreographed, but again, he's you know, and this guy's built up a massive so, uh, following, and he is a, a celebrity in the kung fu. Well, yeah, but, you know, it's just oh, it's just. Well, you, you, I mean, you, you're not going to get a huge amount of promotional products if you like if by doing traditional martial arts you can be great at mid traditional martial arts and then you're going to sell equipment for magazines traditional equipment mm. um you know you're not going to have you know they're not going to get you wearing t-shirts they're not going to get you wearing you know different stuff but uh, as a celebrity in sport you have a much greater and larger following because let's face it the sport industry is far bigger mm. So there's far more money involved. There's far more promotional and sponsors involved, and uh, and that's the direction most people are going. Um, and it's not that they aim that direction. It's just that it's a natural process. It's a natural progression, um, especially if you've got the people from the seventies. Um, I can't even remember their names now, but I was watching a video, um, you know, about a couple of guys, the Death Touch Dimac guy yeah. uh, from America who was originally George Dillman uh, not George yeah, Dillman no 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 he's uh, the uh, no he you don't touch he doesn't touch that's right <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh, before that yeah there was people from the 70s um he, he you know Dim Mac for five dollars he'll teach you how to kill someone with just a, a, t a touch right uh, you'll know him if we if we uh if, if I kind of I can't even remember his name yeah but uh, he was a genuine like karate guy. He did competitions and stuff like that. And the but he was a hairdresser originally. And then he just decided he wanted to. I mean, he got caught. He, he got like caught trying to burn other people's dojos down and stuff like that. The dojo wars. Yeah. What's his name? I don't know, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, was and he got L caught. Wasn't it L.A.? Was it in L.A.? I or... yeah, somewhere like that. Uh, it, it, yeah, I can't remember. It's definitely but... in America. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like he's he's in the he died in the seventies, uh, right? In the late right. seventies, I think. But again, another another celeb another celebrity. Yeah, but this is it. You see, they 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 basically they're creating celebrity status, yeah. so you know to raise interest and and in fact, if some of them do it for the celebrity status alone. Some of them do it specifically for the money. Some of them just do it because they love it and by definition become a celebrity yeah well i was just going to say you know we, you mentioned celebrity I, we yeah. don't just mean the famous celebrity we mean like you could be a you could be a legend in your own mind as yeah you well that's true you know, some and, of them are and yeah. yeah i mean like you know it's all that about boxer that you that boxer that kept on trying to oh charlie z yeah again, charlie legend z, yeah. in his own mind he you turns know, but out he's it, a know, major issue with his brain yeah oh yeah yeah but but you know a lot of martial arts instructors you know have to cultivate have to develop uh a legend if you like um, around yeah. themselves and you know well i mean it, they don't even have to people do it around them they see they see, remember you, you when you're a celebrity you got a lot of hangers on and those hangers on will do all sorts of stuff in order mm. to create jobs for themselves. Yeah. Um, so if you're making enough money, if you've got enough money coming in from an organization, you're going to have an awful lot of people who may not even be anything to do with martial arts. Uh, they just create the idea, the, the, the martial arts organization themselves. Mm. Uh, and then they just use people who have got the talent to and then promote them. And of course, they go along with it because obviously it's it's making it's creating them as celebrities, or yeah, you know, that never lasts because eventually the people with the talent go, "Hang on, I got the talent. What do I need you it. for?" And then that's it. Off. That's yeah. right. Well, that's happened a few times, and <laughs> we know well, people. It's happened it, well, too. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. close to home, it happened to Master Yao. Yeah, well, yeah, but but you could well, master slight difference there. I mean, you know, no, master, I'm talking about people like Mike Haig. No, yeah, I know you're talking about, it. yeah, yeah, you know, but you know, sort of like uh, English contact karate, oh, Howard Brown, oh, you know, what 
you yeah. know, he wants more. Dev, Dev Barrett, Dev, somebody. Oh no! Anyway, the uh, black he, fella. yeah, he takes it. Dev, Dev Barrett, I think his Dev name Brown? was Brown. Dev, no, no, Howard Brown initially, then Dev Barrett or Dev. I know, somebody. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, he took over from from Howard, and uh, you know it went all its its own way, and yeah. so he, he well, started his his version of PKA in um, in the UK. So why is it still so, called Echo then? It's not called Echo. They called they continued as Echo, right? Right. And then he just dropped it and left it and went and started something else, right? Because that yeah. Dev fella, he still runs Echo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, but completely okay. separate to right, to, to right. Oh. You know, and it, it became like I said. You know, he's a promoter. Right. Let's get back on track. This has gone everywhere. The <laughs> it's just the, talking about celebrity. Yeah. No. Uh, it, it, but what, and creating celebrity. Remember. Yeah, but for what ends? What's the end at which you would want money. to create a celebrity? Right. So for money. Now, is can that can it ever be a positive thing or a bad thing to create a celebrity within yourself in martial arts? Uh, I think if it promotes it the right direction, I think there's nothing mm. wrong with it at all. It's only when it becomes, it depends on what you're doing, doesn't Do we, it? Yeah. Do we have a problem with the people trying to make themselves into celebrities or do we have a problem with the followers, uh, an, an, an indirect problem with the followers of these so-called celebrities? Who I have no problem with people who become celebrities, um, mm -hmm. but yep. the people who... Um, I mean, let's face it, everybody wants to be a celebrity in, in, in point of fact, really. I mean, within reason. I'm not saying everybody, but, you know. Um, they want to stand out, right? They, they want, want to, to stand out. Something. They want to do their best. They want to yeah. get to the top of their their yeah. Yeah. thing. And then, of course, they are then – they can be used by many followers. They can be used by many hangers-on. They can be used by many promoters. Take a look at, uh, you know, Mike Tyson – yeah, with Don King and all that. And yeah, as soon as Don King got got the opportunity to take him, that was it. And look at yeah. the, look what happened to him. Yeah, they didn't give care about him. No, no, no. But it, just, it's it's an old old story. But it, it, you know, closer to home, right? So we're looking at Laugar, right? Yeah, we're talking Laugar. We by it's the it's the baseline by which we we talk. Well, it's just it's our style. We talk about. Yeah, all yeah sorts it's what of we know. It's what we know. We... So we we look at sort of the direction of Laugar and how it's been sort of decimated by a celebrity, um, by people seeking celebrity, right? Which if they'd ever watched, you know, the series yeah. Kung Fu with Caradine, they know that uh, ambition grasshopper is bad. So e because um, how many people? Do we sort of know her? and a great many of them are from the Laugar style, ex Guardians, ex you know, yeah. who have now sort of flicked over to following Bobby Davro in the Hungar lot. Now, I think the question is, uh, it's the why would they do Bobby this? Davro. And they are, they are. <laughs> Listen, they are. The question is, or the, the, I think the key question is, why would they take all their, you know, they put in many years with Laugar. Why would they suddenly stop and go and join them? Um, okay, that's so, what I'm interested in, I, and then that can spark us. Right. So, firstly, firstly, we have to we have to look at it as an organisation. Uh, you know, the, the, this is not about disrespecting you know Lao or you know the association in itself. But you have to look at some I mean this is a natural process. This is right. nothing to do with the association. This is simply the fact that it's so widespread, you're gonna have people who train with an instructor, the instructor leaves, they become the instructor, et cetera, et cetera. It just goes, it grows further afield. Yeah. A lot of people lose out on an awful lot of opportunities to train. They mm -hmm. don't get the training, they don't have the knowledge that they maybe could have had. Yeah. And and so what happens is they start to deviate, they start to digress, they start to go look uh, further afield. The grass is always greener, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and that's what happens to a lot of people. And I, and I can see that with a lot of people. And I used to think when I was really dedicated, totally dedicated to the you know the association, the BKF. Yeah, I'd say okay. So that guy's left because he just wants money. That guy's left because he's greedy. That guy's left mm -hmm. because. And you know, over the years, I thought, 
I know why that guy left. That guy left because he was desperately trying to make a living. He was desperately trying to maintain an organization above and beyond the capability of an association that, and and this is not just that association, but associations in general mm -hmm. who cannot create business. They cannot create um What about the support development? network? What about the support network from that? Exactly, where, where there isn't a support network, that's the thing. So a lot right. of people lose the support network, and, and I'm a good example of it. Yeah. Well, where I lost yeah. a massive support network yeah, in, did, in yeah. the event when, when I had issues with, with people. Yeah. And, and, uh, and they yeah. just weren't there to... to, to no one was there, no, that and was all it. they wanted was what I had, and yeah. then they, they got it. So it's not like... You know, oh, you've got the largest organization in, in the BKFA. You've got two, you know, large areas. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, we can we can look after one for you. Which one do you want? Right. And, I'm, so and think, of course, so, I was yeah. angry at the time. And... So, so we've got a sort of, we've got an embedded problem within organizations, right? Yes. And we know from first hand. That well, a, organizations is, let's be clear, let's be of. absolutely clear. There's a problem within, you know, the BKFA. You know, I mean, and, and the fact that they let you go or they didn't give you the support when you mm -hmm. needed it the most, it, that's plainly clear. So yeah. I don't blame anyone from wanting to walk away from that uh, yeah. that pro and, and go off to sort of greener pastures. Yeah. But I think the issue that I have a, that I have is with their integrity as uh, martial practitioners who who are then trying to guide other students and people and and what i mean by that is okay what kind of a person what kind of a person bows goes through a bowing ceremony which is a very personal thing a by say by sea ceremony very personal thing uh it, with master yao and then um for whatever reason and uh, just or unjust goes to another organization and does that very same bowing ceremony where he mm -hmm. sort of pledges his allegiance and all the rest of it, uh, you yeah. know, and bows before them. Um, you know, uh, what? For, and then, and then not only that, these people, and it's not just one person, it's, it's quite a few individuals, they, yeah. they refuse to acknowledge their roots, where they've yeah. come from, and they blank yeah. it and they sort of delete, they, they sort of delete that page of history from my life. So, yeah. you know, in their biographies on these, you know, particularly the Hungar guys who have poached a, a hell of a lot of ex Laugar guys. I don't, I don't think do they I poached them. them. I think well, they just, no, 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 people right, just right. Well, them. Let's, let's be, okay, maybe wrong word, but I, however or not they got there, I don't blame them, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think we one... know, we know the sort of, uh, yeah, okay. You we have know. one. You have one leader, right? You have yeah. one. You know, you only need one leader of a criminal gang, right? Yeah, right. right. And if he can encourage everyone else to yeah. to do the same thing for right. reward, yeah. Or and and it isn't just about financial reward. It's about status. It's status, a, and it's exactly about knowledge. That. If they believe they're going to get more training, if they're going to believe, if they believe they're going to get more, you know, um, they, uh, 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 it's not respect. just that they want the respect, they want the authenticity because the Hungar lot have got an in quotation marks lineage because of Lao Kar Lung and and all that lot. So yeah. they look at the martial art movies and they they think now, oh, I'm part of. Uh, yeah, that's right. Thing. They were just looking for another lineage, if you like. um, but no, they, they already yeah. knew they had a, a, a previous lineage. Okay, they, there was a lineage there, but um, it wasn't a celebrity lineage. Eh, right, exactly. Because um, to be fair to Mastio, has he ever sort of wanted to be a celebrity within the no, cafe? No. But it's other people who made him the celebrity, I think. Well, even I don't think he's a celebrity. I think he just simply is good at what he did. I think he, you know, no, he organized they, people well. Yeah. But, uh, but the thing is also, you've got to remember, he started in the 70s. And in the 70s, if you're a Chinese guy, then yeah, you're yeah. a master. That's what I'm saying. He's That's Chinese. It, so. He fits the bill. He fits it, exactly. was Chinese. People latched onto him. And suddenly, yeah. because it's 1970s, everyone's flocking to a Chinese guy teaching Kung Fu. I've got a real Chinese master now. But yeah, and because now, he, he, now all you need is a white guy who puts on a Chinese accent. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know. But in the seventies, like the you know, black guys would go for him. 
because yeah. he, he wasn't white and yeah, white guys yeah. would go for him because yeah. he wasn't black and you know yeah. it's all that kind of 70s yeah. prejudice yeah and uh when they see a chinese guy they go oh he must know kung fu but the good thing about yao is he did so it was that you know it, that's what made a good organization and a very very powerful organization with everybody respecting him yeah, you know but, from but, all walks of life and all cultures yeah but w back then you didn't have obviously the, the, the reach of social media you use a That's lot of right. word of mouth um yeah. a lot of fighting a lot of competitions that were won uh, in those early days, you know, right through to but the it, end. It, but that's what Lao was all about. That it was, was all a, about yeah. the fighting. And that's right. my argument about martial arts dying today is that it's not about fighting anymore. It's about celebrity status. It's about, you know, they're trying to produce their own kind of image of, of what they perceive to be martial arts. Mm. They don't see the scientific principles, or most of them don't even know the scientific principles. Uh, they wouldn't be throwing their arms about like that otherwise. And take a look at the... You know, we talked about those those guys that follow the the organization you talked about, the Hong whatever. Yeah, they you know they're throwing their arms around. You know, in in a particular way they want to do it, and then there's other martial arts who want to throw their arms around in in another way that they do it. Now, when you look at it, you say, is it a is it a practical way of fighting no it's a style that may have been you know very useful in its day um but not so much in today's world um you've got to adapt and you've got to you've got to flow and that's what Lao did it, it adapted and it flow and that's why it became one of the most successful competitive fighting styles and the people who were doing semi-contact became good full contact fighters they did and all yeah. that is true however do you think Lao Gar has continued to adapt? No, I think uh, they're they're set in their ways, and yeah. uh, that's, uh, that's because there is no leadership, and that's the, yeah. that's the problem. There is no, well, I think there's I, no direction. In, there's, there's certainly not that direction yeah. anymore. There so, are there are a few people that have been allocated to do that, but you know, at the end of the day, they got their own living to make, and there's the. The, no, the no, problem no, lies in that. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, like the the nationals were uh, they called off the nationals for twenty twenty three, and yeah. that must be aside from the pandemic. That must that's the first time in what fifty what was years. it fifty yeah. years fifty years. We should have a I should have a gravestone saying R I P Laugar, fifty <laughs> years old. You know, yeah. gone but not forgotten. But isn't that interesting? That is to, to me. That's the the nail in the coffin. For Laugar, that no, well, it's, uh, I think I, so because it's just going to go, it's just going to demise. People are who, right? You've got you go to a Laugar in quotation was the championships. Do you see Laugar forms being done? No, nope. no, that's true. Do you see a great Not level? Many. Do you see the level of fighting that you did, sort of 70s, 80s, and the, and the spirit and, and the, the diversity Not. of practitioners? No, you don't. No, it because is. other organizations run competitions that have financial reward. Do you know it's funny? And, and they're much they're much more popular because they're promoted much more right. and they're promoted by the celebrities. Yes. And and, and people follow celebrities. Yes. So this is the death of you know traditional uh competitions. Uh you know. Now see you talked about where people just you know, they bow to one person, then they bow to another, and they kind of just leave their association. Yeah. I've never left the association. The association left me. Right? That, right? That's basically it. They just left, you know, me. They they had no – I had no support in that sense and uh, and, I'd, and did my own thing. So um, – but, of course, you know, I left the country anyway, so that's, you know, water under the bridge. But the, the most important thing is I will retain – the style that I learned and and I will not deviate from it and I will not disrespect the Absolutely. people who taught it to me. But um, that doesn't mean to say I'm not going to comment. That doesn't mean to say I'm not going to have any kind of uh, view. No, uh, I will have a view of it and I will continue to have a view of it. Yeah. Uh, people can agree with me or not, but the, the, the evidence is there. And, you know, at the end of the day, they, you know, <laughs> People go off, they do their own thing, um, and they disrespect the style, and they, they wipe the board clean, and they don't want anything to do with what they've done before. All I've ever done is try to support the style. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I would have done, and certainly would do, as I did do when I was in running Scotland, is I would have done, you know, 
uh, competitions differently as they are now, yeah. what I would do is I would create fight nights. So effectively, you would have the fighters come in with a purse uh, or, or for a particular title yeah. or both. And uh, then you would do the, com the, the the forms, you know, the best people. Yeah. That you yeah. would train them for that particular competition yeah. and you would, you know, put your best people forward to do a form, not allow anybody just to come in and demonstrate a form because that was then, but this is now. If you want your style to look good, because it will be on social media, if you want it to look good, then you better get the best people doing those forms uh, from your style and the best people fighting. And to do that, you got to reward them. Yeah. Otherwise, so you know, a night but is... But and and where you you get the t you get the money from the tickets you yeah. don't get the money from the fighters yeah well um i yeah where's the incentive to want to other than for personal training where's the incentive to want to be part of if, at the bkfa anymore where's the incentive what no. what what are we getting from it we're getting disjointed unharmonious you know uh relationships between upper management people like you who were essentially upper management you're not getting the support network you're you're, you're not promoting competitions that are good enough you're not give, giving out rewards you're not promoting the style enough you know you won't even do a podcast be cafe eh? you won't even talk about it you won't even allow us to be promoted on your social media and we're talking about Lao. so where is the incentive for people to want to continue and be proud of training Lao Gar. I mean, forget the individual, uh, you know, satisfaction that I get from training it. Forget that. But because you, you want to create sort of, uh, you know, a uh, collective, you know, identity within the style again, because it's it's not there anymore. I went yeah, it's got to be. You know, yeah. I, I mean, when I went to that movie quiz the other week, I won 40 quid because we won the first prize. That makes me want to go again. You know, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I won some money, you know, and it's just yeah. like, it's you know, not, it's, what, oh, it's not all about money though, but bullshit, unfortunately, bullshit. unfortunately, the, it is. We're in the 21st century for Christ's yeah, sake. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not if you want, seventies anymore. if you want to promote something, you've got to have money yeah. and that, that's it. If, if you don't, if you don't want it to survive, then yeah. just, you know, I mean, look at me. I, I just had no, unfortunately, my interest was not in the money and, yeah. You know, oh, I've got a few people who would like to argue that, of course, uh, those students who left yeah. to do their own, to make their own money from the things that I developed for them and, the, and, and then to give never everything I gave right? them and yeah. then and they can't say a good word about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, but uh, I would have loved to have seen where my car, you know, where's my Porsche? Where's my, you know, Ferrari? <laughs> I, I never saw any of that. Where's my, am I still had a mortgage that I had to, I had to sell the house yeah. uh, in order to come to Canada. I, I had to sell the house because, you know, we couldn't keep the mortgage up because, yeah. you know, as it is, they, they decided well, not just to leave BKFA, right? But to well, to be honest with you, most soil. of them were kicked out of the BKFA as soon as they, you know, when they went off and did their thing. Yeah. But that was my choice. That wasn't anyone else. They were, they were constantly saying to me, oh, you know, maybe they can just run that area and you piss off. Yeah. No They're not going to run any area, basically. No That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But, no you know, but, but, the, but these people chasing celebrity, chasing, you know, this, this, this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, which. And then you have tears of celebrity, remember. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And of course, you have tiers of celebrity, and some of those lower tiers are not as happy as the upper tiers. So they go off and create their own tier right. uh, or their own celebrity, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's where it goes from organisation to organisation. And there you have it, uh, as far as martial arts is concerned. You have so many diversified and broken dreams and broken promises and broken styles that you end up with the the calamity it is today um you know and i'm not suggesting every single style is like that there's bound to be one or two good styles no, but uh, if, I, but... I like you just to just define style for me define stuff because in the context of which we're talking we i'm not well let's thinking say of it... a style as just the technique i'm not thinking of a style as the you know because you can look at sort of muay thai you say oh that's a style oh well that's a sport style. yeah right this is my point so yeah we're not it's not an argument between uh like you know any sport organization muay thai boxing 
uh, jiu-jitsu, MMA. You know, you, you so I'd say those are your big four. Just so let's to- call it let's let's call it a direction then. Okay, then so a direction. Okay, but so see, but but this is the problem with with the traditional arts as opposed to the sport based arts. It, when you're doing sports, you've got instant feedback, instant celebrity, instant likes on Facebook because you've knocked someone out. It's plain. It's in front of you. You've submitted someone. You know, you've done a, I don't know, a flying elbow and knocked someone out. Everyone loves it. But in the traditional arena, there is no, uh, there is no sort of instant um, feedback because it's a lot of it is theoretical. Do you, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean no, no, uh, you can't co- you can't take Wing Chun right and have that compete on the same level as a sport based system like Muay Thai. Yeah, Muay Thai so, will get way more likes than Wing Chun. And because, I think right, yeah, sorry. okay. So I'm just saying I think the way you have to look at uh, traditional martial arts today is it's like the science lab. And out of that science lab, you produce something. You produce, uh, you know, an engineering um, innovation. You you produce a new drug. You produce whatever. Right. But the traditional martial arts holds the key to the tra- the the sport aspects, um, and it should be allowed, and it should be. Um, in that direction, it should be innovation. It should be development. It should be um, maintaining the, the same capability or the same sciences. Yeah, you can't just throw the sciences away. Yeah, and then invent a new science. It, the science is there. You have, but you have to maintain that science, and you have to develop that science until it becomes the product of that science. Yes. In the terms of martial arts, it is, you know, fighting, competitive fighting, even the forms. You know, if you can produce people who can take that science and use it properly and train it properly. And then you have, so you have two aspects, but that must be respected. The scientific, the lab must be respected. And it's not. It's not. And it's not because people are going off and, and they're becoming quacks. And they're inventing things that don't work. And they're inventing things that, you know, it's like going out and saying, so, right, we are we are the inventors of the engine. And then what, they, what do they do? They, I, they bloody give, stick a fly in it and try yeah. to make it work. I'll give you a couple of examples within the last five years, right, that, pr- that prove what you just said is true, that these people are trying to be the inventors and they're not. Mm-hmm. So look at so – we'll look at Muay Thai. For for a for a while, the Superman punch, you know, where you go up bang like that, it's like a <laughs> yeah. flying reverse punch, right? That was all the rage, all the rage. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was happening in the seventies, right? <laughs> <laughs> Amongst the Lao Gar guys, they were taking the piss with it, but it was working. So yeah. certainly the eighties, right? And so swinging your arm over the top, and yeah, all right. that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Another thing um, was the Again, Muay Thai, right? <laughs> Within the last five years, you've seen a lot more Muay Thai guys do uh, spinning back kicks, right? Yeah. <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, right? And it was never really part of it because they're always like front kick, you know, t- kicking around the legs, kick, yeah. kick, the turning kicks, right? Knees. But now they've figured out, oh shit, if I do a spinning back kick and they, their kicking ability is, you know, they're trying yeah. to elevate themselves. And so you've got all these people in these in these styles, particularly like Muay Thai, because I'm using them as an example, saying this guy's an innovator. This is that. This is that. It's like no, he's not, because this was happening a long time ago. It was made in the lab. It, it was it was always yeah. there. You know, yeah. I'm not saying it originated in the 70s and 80s because no, you it know originated these a lot before. Yeah, thousands yeah, of came, years, thousands of years before. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's just when you've got the the lab versus the the you know the the group of people going out there thinking they're the lab, but they're not the lab, no. and they'll come to their own conclusions. And eventually they might come round, you know. Um, you know, so it's it's kind of funny how it sort of 
it it comes around. But, but the the problem is the the problem is if the lab dies, if if we lose that science, then it's going to be those innovators yeah. who will f start their own labs, and we know but what their happens. labs will be deficient. Of well, the we know what happens with insufficient. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Look at look at the different ideas people had with COVID. Well, look at the different ideas they've had with all sorts of diseases. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we can be saying, okay, penicillin, penicillin, and they can be saying, oh, wait a minute, let's just let's just stick one of them uh, leeches on you, mm. <laughs> suck your blood. Mm. And that's it. Because It's like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You just got to take it out of those, you know, out of the science, make sure that the science is prevalent. It's It's got to yeah. be prevalent. Uh, and it's got to be respected, yeah. and it's not respected oh, by not the respected. very people who People's claim to be scientists. Yeah, well, it's not respected by the very people who are using its principles for their own yeah. success. Yes, but also food. the people that claim to be scientists, the, you know, the traditionalists, they're not they're not even maintaining the the um, the actual science. They're just no. going, oh, well, wait a um, minute. And they're, they they th think they're innovators as well. Well, they, because they're, they're going back to the celebrity thing. They want to be celebrities, but they're convinced they're innovators. I mean, look in the UK, you know, you've got you've got a one legged you know, karate guy who now teaches Tai Chi, but it's not Tai Chi. And he gets conflated between what a Joe stick is, what a bow stick is, and what a spear is. And yeah. so this guy who's claiming to be an innovator, you know, and making a shitload of money teaching Tai Chi and Kung Fu, um, using a bloody bow staff and the principles therein mm. as a spear form. Yeah, completely different weapon. So they just yeah, so they throw weapon. yeah, they throw it around. I mean, we've seen so many you people know, and, that, and it, but it can't. makes no sense anyway. Well, we've seen so many people throwing spears around that have no concept of what's you know a spear, the you know the uh, elements of a spear or the the benefits of a spear in comparison to the sticks. No, but but, uh, but the, there's people listening who are going, well, show us the spear then. It's yeah. not the point. It's not. It's not the point. You know, we can first of all critique it, you know, from a position, from a scientific standpoint, you know, yeah. uh, and then, you know, argue with you in that way. I don't have to prove anything. You just have to sort of prove that we're wrong about the conclusions. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, it's just it, it exists. Okay, the you know. science exists there. Yeah, exactly. so yes, you know, we can we can see it and say, yeah, that's correct and that's incorrect, right? But that's like the science. We do. You can do the exercises. You can do the, um, you know, the the trials and so on. But then it's for the people who are, you know, the athletes and yeah. so on who develop that. Um, but that's like saying that you know, a, you're expecting your teacher to be able to do what you can do when you're a youngster, it, it ain't going to happen. No. But he's going to be able to show you it. He's going to be able to explain it to you, providing he's got that knowledge. And uh, if he hasn't got that knowledge, then you're going to learn something that isn't even doesn't even make sense. And there there lies the problem Absolutely. where people are not following the, uh, the, the actual science. And so if you haven't got a, a specific... Now, I, th I see Lao... I see the association of BKFA as the lab. Okay, I do see it as a lab because it has been innovation, innovated. It, it has, has created it. that. Yeah. But the, we're going back to a, a, you know the point that not everybody gets the chance to, you know, to study in that lab. Uh, they don't get the chance to do those experimentations. They don't get the chance to develop. Uh, the techniques and so on yeah. they're you know in reality they are far from you know the 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 center of innovation and they they start to lose it even if they don't make their own up they try to understand what no, the, the, what they no. see as to be they'll like and you see that in the national sets in the in the forms they'll go to other labs steve and, and they'll take their research and before you know it they're doing a fucking you know would, yeah, that's, yeah that's you right know? and it's like Wow. That's right. So they, yes, yeah, some of them will, some of them will stay totally loyal, but then begin to wonder why. And remember, you know, loyalty's left, loyalty's when, belief left when belief is gone. That's yeah. correct. No, absolutely. So people do lose their belief in it, and then they start looking elsewhere to try to add to what they think the style should be. 
Yeah. And as soon as they start adding those things in, they start to lose the style. It becomes a completely separate, yeah. you know, uh, entity which has nothing really to do with the style. Yeah. And and unfortunately, that is, I think you'll find the bigger an organization gets, the more that is prevalent. And that's why you need the, the structure in the center to be able, and the people who are willing to go out and show that and and as much as i could and i did go out so, to so scotland yeah, every yeah. sunday four o'clock in the morning starting classes throughout until monday and then coming back to birmingham um you know i wasn't the greatest martial artist and still not but i had that will to go and try to show people yeah. what they're doing wrong what they uh, you know what the association was doing or what the bkfa was doing what the center was doing so you know at least i was because i was trained in the you know in but, birmingham yeah. it was much easier but you, for me to go out there and then look at what how yeah, the changes I, were. I, I think the reward for you was the teaching yeah and the proliferation of what you were teaching you yeah. weren't asked you weren't saying to yourself back then in those days what am I getting from this? Because you knew, you you had this vision, this this path, this road. You felt you had to be on this spiritual calling, whatever you want to call it. But the problem is these days, everybody wants something for themselves. Yeah. Um. You know, it's like a lot of you know RX members. All I ever wanted was knowledge and advancement. You know, implying it's it's I, I want to take something from it. I, I I'm here to get something for me. And I, I I believe that in those days you didn't think like that. But I also understand that perhaps in now in the context of what's happened to you, you might, you know, Yeah, but it would be a scientific principle though. There would always be but the good thing is the knowledge is yeah. good. So Oh, forget the science. Uh, I'm just talking about like your journey, your your calling. You know, like my journey to Scotland was was it was turning... a selfless sort of uh, yeah uh, devotion. Yeah. I remember I mean? the very first day I got to Scotland. I went to Scotland. I, I met everybody mm. that was teaching in that area at the time, just over the bridge. Um, you know, Edinburgh, the the bridge. What's it? What I don't even remember the name of the damn bridge. It goes from Edinburgh to Fife. Uh, anyway, uh, Christ, that's terrible. Don't ask me. <laughs> anyway i got to a hotel there and i sat with them and the, instead of me saying to them you know this is what i said i says i'm here to help you i want to see it flow i want to see it develop in scotland so you know i'm going to help you develop this develop that develop the other what i should have said is you're going to help me yeah because you didn't uh, cultivate that celebrity within yourself no i never was a celebrity exactly. and never and, and i never will you be didn't do that there was always that element of respect. That never well, they, they loved it. They loved the fact that they were now being told what to do. You see, that's yeah, what they needed. They, they yeah. needed development. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of these people, they needed that development and they benefited from the development. But yeah. then they, when someone shinier came along, Oh yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. They suddenly thought, "Oh well, Steve, no, no. this, no. Guy, this, guy, you know, and yeah. it's like, he's showing them something different. There, exactly. this is old stuff, right? So you know, you know it's supposed to be yeah. the whole idea is to train it so it becomes yours, exactly. not so right. not to train it. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're still doing the first set in the same way you were taught, you may as well go to another style. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, it's it's pointless. You're not learning anything. But if you go to another style, now you've got to learn a completely different direction. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to uh, do exactly the same with that one. Which, if you take a look at some of the, you know, videos right. that are on Good there, day. which I sent you the other day. Yep. Simon. Yeah, it's 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 ex Laogar guy is trying to interpret Hungar, yeah. and it just doesn't look good. And no. it's not it's not that Hungar can't look good, guys. Like it genuinely can. Like it genuinely can, but when you've got these people who, uh, you know, half-assed, you know, martial artists, you know, they're not even applying to... loud to it though. They're not even applying how because it they, works. Because, they're just throwing their arms told, around. Yeah, they're just like, they, because they're told, no, oh, it's how it's done. Yeah, you this know? is when how the movement there. goes. No, yeah. and no individual thought. No individual. It's just a collective, um, um, you know, uh, you know, disease. Just a process. A pro yeah. I, I, disease because they're all you know, they're all <laughs> fucked excuse my french um 
So what's to be done about it? That's like, uh, how how does it go forward? What's the future? I mean, the premise is martial arts are dead. And we mean traditional martial arts. Uh, that's what I, at least I mean when I say it. So I'd like to think that um, there are people within the echelons of, you know, the, the association, uh, we're talking about our association, but any association where they have a decent style or a decent traditional aspect, a, a decent science, and definitely, uh, um, you know, longevity in their, you know, in their, um, shall we say, their pedigree. Mm. Um, I'd like to think that those people, they should not just hide behind their scientific, you know, endeavours, their, their principle, but they should find people within their group that are keen to go out and build it. But it loyalty, isn't it? It's all about loyalty. I was prepared uh, to go out and do everything I could to make Lao what it is or mm. what it was. And, um, you know, I did everything. I moved my family, everything. We, we just moved, you know. And, and I, I just really believe that... You've got to find those people. You can't. You've got to have managers. You've got to have teachers. You've got to have managers. You've got to have promoters. Um, you've but got those people, a reward system as well. You've yeah. Have... Well, the, the promoters have got to develop it, but they they'll they've got to be rewarded. And I think one of the big issues with our style is that as it becomes less and less. Um, I don't know. It's no such thing as a as a as a professional instructor, right? You, you, if you was a professional instructor in two thousand and twelve, at that meeting, no more professional instructors, right? Right. Anyone who becomes an instructor from now on, they have to teach for the association. Where's the incentive for the instructors that teach them? Gone. No more promoters. Mm -hmm. That's the end of it. Yeah. So, who would think of such a thing, right? Well, leave Communist. it to you. <laughs> I don't just say no, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't so, know. Buddhist would... maybe, but it's just. I mean, it's just you've got to have people who want to promote the style. You've and to that end, you've got to have professional instructors, and yeah. you've but you've got to be able to trust those professional instructors. So it is a simple fact of developing a management managerial system. It is a, possibly a contract system, um, but if you're not doing that, uh, why? Because you don't want to be you know, entangled in any legal situation that they get into, you, because you're associated with them and you're in charge of them, suddenly become responsible. No one wanted the responsibility. Right, right. So consequently, no contracts, okay? Or oh, nothing to do with me. That's his martial arts. Yeah, yeah. Nothing to do with me, right? Yeah, I just taught him the martial art. That's it, okay? Mm. But... Mm, you know, unfortunately, I, it isn't. I, we're in a, it isn't the way to run an organization. No, but, and you need to really run these organizations. You know. Well, you asked why? Why is it dying? Uh, or yeah. people will ask, why do we think it's dying? There's the reason. Yeah, uh, I think that in, as we stand in 2023, you know, it is get it is hard enough to promote a genuine traditional martial art without jazzing it up without. Uh, turning your class into a meditation hive you yeah. know uh, well, and yeah. all, the, all the other bullshit that goes and then with it gets it. the flack from all the people that and, don't believe and in it and... so, but rightly so because yeah in the, in the people, for the most part yes yeah and rightly so you know it's get it's so hard to teach a genuine style particularly when i first joined you know you in 2003 um I, back then i thought that was the norm now it's like it's like chasing, you know, a unicorn. It will never be that good again. Like the mm. amount of people in the class, the vibe, you know. But now it will never be like that again. It's, it's it's getting more difficult to teach traditional martial arts. Kung Fu in particular. No one wants to do Kung Fu anymore. Yeah. And because all these sort of athletes are, you know, are out. They're convinced that Kung Fu doesn't work, this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for the most part, I don't blame them for their, yeah. you know, their, their conclusions because the amount of shit that, that is constantly out there um, with regard to Kung Fu is just, you know, incredible. But it's just funny. But, but, but all these YouTube channels I watch, 
you know, all these bloody American YouTube, Sensei Seth, hard to hurt. They're always asking the same frigging question. What's the best martial art? What's the best martial art? What if we put this martial art against that martial art? Who's going to win? You know, completely coming to it from a, a schoolboy, more like a preschool type of educational background. None of them have a clue. None of them can, you know, figure out how to effectively uh, test the science of it because they're all, you know, oh, it, it, it really riles me all that shit. What yeah. martial arts the best? So, yeah. okay, you're going to you're gonna compare a woman teaching Tai Chi, right, for health and relaxation in a studio. You're going to compare Tai Chi in that context against a Thai boxer who solely trains uh, to fight. To fight, yeah. and then you're going to come up with the with the conclusion that Tai Chi is isn't relevant. Okay, yeah, completely from the wrong basis, from yeah. the wrong starting point. Okay, and and that's just that's a very blatant, obvious example. But that's essentially what they're doing, you know. Yeah, I think it's so, and I think it's it's like trying to pit two different animals together. You know, they yeah. you know one of them. If he's if he's that way inclined, he's going to win. Um, you know, and then you sometimes you get a surprise. You know, like a a honey badger and a and a lion. The honey badger man just goes for the crotch. You know, he just goes for it. Oh yeah, that's tenacity for you. That's you know, right. badger's yeah. probably one of the worst things you can come across in there. <laughs> you know, the lion yeah. just looks at it and goes, "Yeah, you can have it." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having my junk bit off. By I don't want no trouble. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, you know, but that that's the state of the martial arts vibe, I think, on YouTube. This conversation. All, all I'm interested, all I, and I respect all these, like, these jiu-jitsu guys and these Muay Thai guys who just get on with their videos. They just yeah. they just show you how they're training. They're hitting the pads. They're great. They're, they're, they're you yeah. know, it's the ones who turn around and say, well, this technique is, is I kind of invented it. It's like, no, you haven't invented it. That was a long time ago, you know, but people believe it and so on and so forth. But, you know, when we say, oh, just let people get on with that, you know, th that's fine. But it's the, the misrepresentation of Kung Fu, yeah. you know, that, that really... Specifically what we're always talking about. You yeah, know? it just really pisses me off, really does, because it's mm -hmm. just, you know, this the crap that's out there, particularly like that, that Chinese guy I was telling you about. Like yeah. all, these, all these things are sped up. And the, and the yeah. 1970s people, yeah. you know, I wish I remembered their names now, but the I, I just watched this program yesterday about it. That's Stephen Seagal in as well. Yeah. And, you know, it had everything that's, you know, come to pass. And, of course, in those days, you, you believe everything you see. Yeah. Um, but now it's just too, there's too much now on YouTube too. Yeah, yeah you can judge it, you know, judge oh, it for yourself. Um, and that's do. why it's it's worthless in doing any technique in on show because every single technique, if I do this, everyone goes, oh, that, that my thumb was in the wrong place. Mm. Right? <laughs> Straight yeah. away. I say, oh, no, it wasn't long enough. Oh, it wasn't fast enough. <laughs> you know, it just, oh, no, that wouldn't work. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? They, they would yeah. do that the second you do. And that's why we never demonstrate these things. And and the only th things we do are for beginners to to get a grip of the style so they understand the style better. And that's what it's for. It's not meant to say, "Oh, you're wrong," and I'm and I'm right. That's it's not about that. It's saying, look, this is what you can use. This is how you can use it. This is why you you're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but no one said ever that there's not other ways. Of course, there are. That we already know there are millions of ways of using specific uh, forms. So you know, we can't sit there and do a video that lasts you know five years demonstrating every form every movement every possible movement we could know and then there'll be hundreds that we don't mm, absolutely so that's that's the answer to the people that say well let me see your stuff then because it's pointless because you will come at it from a completely different point of view mm. that's why you want to see our stuff yeah but uh you know we never have any comments that are bad about uh, the the videos that we put out and they are just simply you know, demonstrated, you know, what a beginner can do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to tell, you know, anyone to suck eggs, as they say. No, no, no. They just, can do what they to be want. Aware, just to be aware of the lab. Got to be aware yeah. of the lab, people. Yeah. You know, where, where, so, okay. Well, that was that was kind of a an interesting one. Um, 
future of Laugar? Is it dead now? Be honest. What's your thought? What's your heart say? And I don't well, mean my heart. I my... don't mean the, the the style that will continue in us and you and me and whatever. I'm talking about as we knew it, as you knew it. Mm. Where is it dead now? Is it dead? My heart says I'd like to see it, uh, you know, revived. Uh, it definitely on it's definitely on the operating table. You know, it definitely needs uh, some resuscitation. Uh, not the style, no. not the style. They'll live on in individuals, like you said, um, but as an association, as a promotable um, entity, as a as a something that has a place in society, in the martial society, if you want. Mm -hmm. um, it is not. It's not in good health, um, and that's been for the last ten years. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it needs looking at, and and I wish people would come together and instead of just sitting in these meetings and going yes, yes, okay, we'll do that then, okay, right now you got to discuss it, you got to argue it, and you know none of the guardians meetings were arguable. We had little discussion periods where you come up with ideas. Any idea I came up with, I always I would stand by, sit by a certain person that I knew would talk to Masty Howe. Yeah. And and every time I talked to them, suddenly it'd come out at the end of the meeting. Oh, Masty, I've thought of this. It's like, go, it's like, it, yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's, but it's like bloody, you know, it's like the fear in communism where everybody is afraid to tell the truth. Yeah. Everybody, you know, for fear of sort of a, a reprisal of some sort. Or No one wants or, to stand out. No, exactly. Right, exactly. With yeah. their peers. Yeah. As soon as they're in their own realm. Yeah. Now they stand out. That's right. And it, like yeah. trying to get a load of kingdoms together. Yeah. It ain't going to happen, right? Yeah. You get the kingdoms together, they'll always agree. Yeah. The second they go out, they've got their own agendas. Yeah. And isn't that the same with everything? So yeah. that's why you cannot do it. So, yes, you have to have you have to have management, but you have to have um, a structure of, of diplomacy. You have to be diplomatic. And... Uh, when I say diplomat, sometimes being a diplomat means you have to say it how you see it. And then, you know, people can deny it all they like. Mm. Um, but it depends on how many people speak out, right? And then you, you vote for it or you, you know, and, you know, maybe you don't get what you want, but you just keep on campaigning. Yeah. Uh, that's basically you've got to make your direction or your, your um, viewpoint uh and what you believe in you've got to make sure that it is uh heard and if it isn't heard then it ain't no good to you it doesn't matter how good your viewpoint is it's no good to anyone mm. right and then later on when you see it all fail you know you can say well i i, I had the idea I told you so but it's no good and, and i'm guilty of that because i went to those meetings and i couldn't say anything and, and you know I remember going to the very, very first Guardian meeting, very first Guardian meeting, and uh, Master says, we're going to be calling uh, you, 12 of us, the Guardians. And then, and he says, I don't want to hear anything about the name or anything like that. And the first thing he said, any question, I says, can we talk about the name? Because <laughs> I thought it was stupid. Um, you know, uh, you know. I, but society was a bad word. Yeah. So... You know, Lao society, the Society of Lao, or yeah. whatever it could have been called. But I, I didn't want to be called a guardian. Yeah. You know, that's but but that's the way it is. But you, you know, but if if you're listening and you're in the, you're in the organisation, you can still contribute to the Lao Family Trust. You know, <laughs> the, the Centre of Excellence. You, you can still send us a contribution to that. Um, yeah. You know, you can still do a referee course. I mean, they've got a few booked for this year, despite the <laughs> fact that they've cancelled the nationals. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, very peculiar, very sad times. And, there, uh, there are some wonderful people in that association yeah. that, that desperately want it to be good. Yeah, you've got to get together, guys. Yeah, you you got to want to talk about it, and none of you do, apart from us, and we're pretty much sort of the black sheep. Well, yeah, that's you. why that's so why we're that's here. Why we can. <laughs> So yeah, I guess we can because we don't give a shit anymore. Well, you know, so go, you know, get, I, get I've given enough yeah. to to the association and got nothing back yeah. in return. You know, I, I everything I did, I did for me. Uh, you know, I did on my back, and that that's it. I did everything for the association, as I say. But for me, you know, 
it was all my effort, if yeah. you like. Yeah. So, so, uh, so wherever you are, get get down to that operating theater. Start practicing the kiss of life for Laugar. Yeah, you know, and will yeah. it, will it, to to to, to, yeah. to revive? Okay, guys, what a what a depressing podcast that was. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. No, okay. it's not depressing. And um, you know, like it's, I said, there are some wonderful people, and they are they've got to get their fingers out. Yeah, no, they do, they do, they do. They do. They absolutely do. So uh, best of luck to all of you. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you soon again for another episode of the Kung Fu Podcast. Um, until such time, keep training, you know, keep it real and, uh, you know, keep asking questions. That's the main thing. All right. Take care of yeah. yourselves. I'll see you soon. From me, James Still, goodbye. And from Mr. Newbie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, it's got warmer now. It's minus 19. <laughs> Marvellous. Right. So, yeah. Okay, you going to say goodbye I, or not? Yeah, I was sorry. I was just telling them about the weather because I'm, I'm like a weatherman, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. weathered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a good one, everyone. Yeah. Take care, guys. See you now. Bye-bye. Bye. Concentrate on your enemy's weak points. The eyes, the throat, the knackers. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast. If you like that and you want to find out more about us, you can head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or YouTube and find us under SJN Martial Arts. And also guys, this podcast is available on Podbean and iTunes. So, until next time. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you again on the Kung Fu Podcast. Karate punch is like an iron bar. Whack! A Kung Fu punch is like an iron chain with an iron ball attached to the end and it goes whang! Can you break a log like that? Don't know. Never been attacked by a tree. Yeah. Such is life, you know. They, 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 well, they dug their own thing. I mean, they, they weren't, they weren't seen as a grave, but they didn't dig their own grave. They dug a log, Laugar's grave. Uh, yeah. Under the guise of did. being traditionalists, we care yeah. about kung fu so much, and we yeah, so that you destroy a style. You destroy a style and then bow to another one who don't give a yeah. shit about you. Lives in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. you know piss off yeah just mm -hmm. i hate the human race man <laughs> yeah. so you're boring. gonna throw all that lot in that that lot was a good conversation you should throw that in the, the it's a it's a bomber it's just but martial arts is dying and and it's something that we always wanted to do and i'm i'm teaching driving i'm teaching with the same passion but it's not kung fu mm. You know, but uh, what can I do? It's at least it's recognised. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not I, suggesting that. I'm saying if anybody asks us questions, we got to give them a straight answer yeah. to what it is. Yeah. You know, when you say, if I send them and uh, you know a little bit of a footage of me them explaining something, then it's not going to be oh no, you're wrong. Yeah. I'm going to say, well, this is why I do it. This is how it's done. You know, in the sense that this is what comes of it rather than, you know, I mean, like that guy, for instance, who swore blind. Why would you care about the stick being this height? You know, eyebrow. And then what does he do? He's pretty much standing on his frigging tiptoes. Do you know what I mean? And then he's, he, you know, he's just not even he's just trying to prove us wrong. What the? Why are you doing that? Why would you want to do that? Why don't you just go? Oh, it makes sense. Right. Because no, he, he was trying to prove us wrong on a on a minuscule on an thing, inch yeah. on a technic on a technicality. Yeah, but, uh, actually, it was more sort of word swordsmanship than anything. Because yeah. he says it's up to the eyebrow, as you can see, it's not up to my eyebrow. It's like <laughs> what? You're fucking no. stupid or something? Yeah. Yep. No, it's... but he was just doing his best to to diss it, and and you know. <sighs> 
won't be effort, but uh, yeah. Well, if anybody, you know, that that kind of you can, that's the kind of thing you want to put on the the podcast because you go. Let's just take a look at his feet. Let's just take a look at his his, his head, the way it's yeah. tipped up like that, yeah. right? Yeah. He was doing his best. It not, he wouldn't reach him, right? Yeah. Wouldn't reach his eyebrow. It was here, wasn't it? It was lower. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was lower, and that's because he had shoe, he had trainers on, and that's his right. head was up like this. That's right. Yeah. Instead yeah. of just standing there, and you just go, "What are you on?" Yeah. You know, why are you trying to create an argument from a fact?